What's up, Previews World? It's Wednesday, which means it's new comic book day, which means it's once again time for Previews World Weekly. I am your host, Ashton Greenwood. And you might notice we are without Troy today, so we have a very special guest filling in with us. Hi. Hey. What's it's up, me, Natasha? Natasha. <laughs> you might recognize her from Previews World Toy Chest. That's me. Welcome to your daily, daily toys. Weekly daily toys. toys. Love that. Weekly toys. Used to be daily. We'll be daily again. Mm. <laughs> wink, wink, nudge, nudge. <laughs> Welcome to the show. We're going to cause some chaos while Troy's out. Left us with the reins. It went so well with awesome. Amanda. So we're going to just recreate yeah. that mess this time. Cool. So we talk fish sticks. We talk <laughs> um, purple chicken nugget men. What else? Of we course. Talk? Okay. Yeah, a requirement. <laughs> <laughs> Hit all, hit yeah, all you went in a vault for that fish stick. <laughs> I did, I did. <laughs> uh, if you don't know what we're talking about, you can watch all of our previous game night videos from last year on the previous yes. YouTube page. If you want to see just the most mayhem possible. The most mayhem. <laughs> like for the collection of all of us together. And it's ours. Yeah. All right, so let's jump into it. You, you're bringing us something special this week. You saw something cool on social media. What was that? I don't even know if cool can describe it. It's okay. amazing. Um, I'm a, just a little preface. I'm a huge mm -hmm. Spawn fan. Todd McFarlane's my dude. Yeah. Like love, love Spawn. Loved it since I was 13 years old. And you know, scrolling through my my follow stuff, and um, there's this epic photo of from Jason B. Michael, and he mm -hmm. takes this to so this guy. A little backstory. This guy is an mm -hmm. awesome photographer who takes toys and collectibles and turns them into these epic like comic book quality beyond that, like images. And it's yeah. just amazing. And so I saw this one and I even commented, I don't know if you can even see it. I said, you know, <laughs> like, it's so perfect. I could cry. Mm -hmm. um, it's just so cool what he does. And he does um, behind the scenes too. Like he's on all social media, but on TikTok, mm -hmm. he does like awesome behind the scenes of how he created these images. You can see there. And, um, and it's just really cool. And a lot of the stuff he actually makes himself mm -hmm. or like if he does get like the um, cape from somewhere else. He'll mention it, things like that. So, mm -hmm. like, you know, great photographer crediting uh, other creations. But um, I mean, just the stuff he does is just so talented and he's such a nice guy. Mm -hmm. And just, it's just really, really cool as a big toy fan and collector and all of that to be able to see, you know, like this, when you're playing with your toys in your head, this is kind of the yeah. images you see, you know, oh, absolutely. You spawn, spawn destroying the bad guys with his cape yeah. and chains and, you know, and all that kind of stuff. And it's just, so so cool and the attention to detail and the lighting and it's mm -hmm. really an art it's absolutely an art and um yeah i just had to to bring it to the show and and sh like really it's and it's cool really cool it's so fun too like um people will suggest things and he'll oh, recreate okay. so like there will be one um so this is awesome you got miles morales there you got spider-man mm -hmm. um he has one with the swedish chef <laughs> and um, with like a mashup and like there's a lot of great mashups and mm -hmm. and things like that it's just really really cool and you know as yeah. a as a toy fan as a comic fan as a movie fan i mean any kind of fan who just likes really fun collaborative images or just really fun yeah. images you should really go follow him he's really really talented like do you see like there's a little porg flying too <laughs> oh no i missed the porg i saw you oh, think, oh, yeah no. <laughs> and there's a chicken <laughs> Like the chicken. Yeah, it's you know, just really you know, creative. Point, Natasha, like, it's so crazy that these are actually toys, like actually toys. action figures. It yeah. looks so lifelike. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just so cool. I mean, it, yeah, it doesn't, it blows your mind that these are all toys and then like cool effects mm -hmm. and you'll see like, oh, using like a can of air to, you know, make dust go and like capturing the yeah. shot. And it's just, it's truly just a really, really cool creative talent. And um, yeah, as a t as a toy fan, I had to had to give a shout out. Yeah, dude, for real. Thank you for sharing yeah, that. And it's absolutely. like it's across the board. It's like everything you could be a fan of. He's everything. Done yeah, <laughs> yeah. And if you go on there and too and like give suggestions or whatever, mm -hmm. um, you have to see. There was one where it was Batman sitting at the table and like the Joker is serving him and like just there it is just the details oh god like so the cool. tiny little details and like mm -hmm. so it's joker is the salt bay <laughs> and, and, um, yeah yeah i totally missed that the first time we looked at that yeah yeah but i mean all the little detail i mean it's just crazy 
Like you could wow. easily just have done like little bits and pieces, but I mean, he gets like every little, yeah. every little miniature detail and it's really, really cool. Oh my God. There's actually water in that. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that is like, insanely so fun. detailed. Holy moly. It's so fun. And it just, for me, it just takes me back to when I was a kid playing mm -hmm. with toys and, you know, creating my own stories and adventures. Yeah. Just it, you know, captured like that is really cool. And then do you see, oh, the other one is cool. Yeah, that's his website, Jason B. Michael. The um, Wally one, it has the alien mashup, which I totally like. Oh, does do. it? Mm -hmm. Oh, dude, anytime I see Wally, I just immediately get sad. And the only thing I'm focused on is like, oh, Wally. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's it's just really cool. And uh, yeah. you can check them out on, I mean, uh, it's the same on all social media platforms. Mm -hmm. Jason B. Michael, um, jasonbmichael.com is his website. Yeah. Like. Just really, really cool stuff, and it's just yeah enjoyable. It's really, really cool. Yeah, that's amazing. So go give him some love. Follow him. Yeah, and right, thank so you to him for letting us use his images. And yeah, you know, it's really cool stuff. <laughs> Nerd out about him, <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, also, in toy news, there's a new Funko Pop previous exclusive Funko yes. Pop. Did you see this? Yes. Oh, heck yeah! So cool. I'm not cursing yeah. here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so this new Kate Pride with Lockheed previous exclusive Funko Pops. You can only get at your local comic shop. Uh, it's based on her appearance in Gary Duggan and Matteo Lally's Marauders comic. Uh, yeah. And as Natasha pointed out, she's got her hold and fast tattoos on her knuckles. Mm -hmm. um, and it also comes with a little tiny Lockheed buddy with yeah. her. Uh, she's regular size, three and three quarter inches tall. And of course, comes in Funko's iconic um, window box. So you can keep her in the box, do not remove from box. <laughs> so you can pre-order her now at your local comic shop and she's coming out in November and she is so cool. She's so cool. I saw that on the site. And I was like, what is this? I need it. <laughs> right. And yeah. they're doing a lot of these like buddy ones. Like they did uh, Galactus with the Silver Surfer. And it's so cute. Yes. It's a little extra guy. <laughs> <laughs> your I wish I knew more to say here. I'm not like a big Marvel person. This is where I'm like, I wish Troy was present mm -hmm. to tell us something. Yeah. Yeah, but I know, it's right? nevertheless really cool. If you're if you're like a like an indiscriminate Funko collector, like if you're Anna Mia, who's like, I need every Funko Pop yeah. that God has ever created. She's got a good collection. She <laughs> does. Right yeah, and that's another one to yeah. add to the list. Sounds really cute too, and you know, it's some Marauders. If you don't know, that's like mm -hmm. a little piratey fun, right? So, mm -hmm. If you're a pirate fan and an X Men fan. There you go. <laughs> right. Made <laughs> specifically for you. Yes. <laughs> right, so let's move on. We're going to jump into our picks for this week, even though we've yes. already told you a bunch of cool stuff we already like. <laughs> you can get yeah. Right now at your local comic shop. What's that comic shops? All right. So Natasha, you are our special guest. So kick it off. Shocking. I <laughs> on. Ooh, there, wow. Really blows away with that one. Right. Woo. <laughs> New information. Uh, I chose this spawn for a couple of different reasons besides mm -hmm. the fact it's spawn. Um, this particular one has an awesome twist ending to it. Okay. And a surprise enemy that he thought was gone pops up too. So that's kind of exciting. Mm. Um, and then also just the cover. Um, I grew up collecting spawn figures and everything and the medieval mm -hmm. spawn was one of my favorites and this mm -hmm. is totally that and he just looks so cool yeah. and tough and with that armor and uh, yeah I couldn't not pick this one because he was just it just took me back to you know a long time ago I'm not going to say what decade <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, for that medieval spawn mm -hmm. and so I, I totally chose this and of course it's from Todd McFarlane and I'm so excited about all these new spawns coming out it's so awesome so yeah. awesome you know how everyone's always like oh don't yeah. judge a book by its cover or whatever but the yeah. spawn covers are insane so good yeah like if for no other reason you pick it up just the cover alone right look at that cover yeah and then being in toy fashion gonna cut in there I also have a toy pick. Oh, oh, cool. Perfect. And it's Rogue, not this one. It's the one from DST. Diamond Select oh, Toys cool. did this beautiful from the X-Men animated series of Rogue, my girl. Mm -hmm. And um, she's amazing. This is a limited bust, though. Okay. Only 3,000 3, of them. 
So if you want it, you best go get it and fight me for it. Um, <laughs> it's uh, just a beautiful piece. I really love a lot of the, I mean, a lot of the DST products that come out are just so detailed yeah. and so affordable. That little yeah. twist there. Um, and she, I mean, she's just gor gorgeous. The vibrant colors, it's just like you picked it right out of the TV. So absolutely. I, and yeah, especially all of like the lining with the black fine mm -hmm. lines make her look yeah. like, she's, like right off of a comic page. Yes, absolutely. And so I had to go with my girl, go with my ex. Can't yeah, blame you for it. Solid <laughs> pick. And like you said, DST, I, I mean, Troy and I have said that before too. Like DST makes such good quality stuff that you don't they have do. to bring the bank for. They do. I mean, mm -hmm. their whole PVC line, like everything, yeah. like it's so good. And it's 40 to 60 bucks, depending exactly. on what it is. Like that's as a collector, that's awesome. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna oh thanks. <laughs> I was gonna say I'm gonna Your steal turn. steal the limelight for a second. <laughs> uh so my pick this week is I survived the attacks of September eleventh. Uh perfectly timed for the 20th anniversary is coming up next weekend. So this is from Scholastic and Graphics. Um, so they Scholastic is kind of taken to doing um, this graphic novel line of historical fiction stories aimed at younger readers. So it takes all like, you know, historical events and couches them in fictional events that make them feel more accessible and less daunting to learn about these things. Um, and so, of course, this particular title focuses on the events of 9-11. Uh, and so it focuses on a boy named Lucas who loves football and his Uncle Benny. And his Uncle Benny's the best. He works for the fire department in New York City. Um, and he kind of leans on his Uncle Benny for everything. So one day, Lucas's parents tell him they don't want him to play football anymore. It's too dangerous. He's going to get hurt. So, you know, Lucas ditches school one day. He gets on the bus or sorry, he gets on um, the train instead of the bus and heads into the city to find Uncle Benny. Except, of course, you can kind of figure how this story is going to end. Uh, it is September 11th. And as I said, Uncle Benny's a firefighter for uh, New York City. So when he arrives, everything is, you know, way different than he would have expected. Uh, and this does a really good job, like I said, of taking the real life events and interweaving it with, you know, a fictional story, in this case, this family. Um, and like I said earlier, they also do a line of like other events that make this kind of more accessible. So they've done the sinking of the Titanic. They've done the oh, Jersey wow. Shore shark attacks of 1916. Um, and they even did the Nazi invasion of 1944. And I think this oh, is a really. really good idea. Right. It's a really good idea because it takes these kind of like really heavy, daunting things and makes them accessible to younger people in a way that doesn't feel uh, as abstract or as scary. So I'm into it. And something else I realized, Natasha, you talked earlier about age, where it, we've reached a point where we have children and teenagers who didn't didn't experience 9-11 as a real life event for them. Like yeah. that's history as far as they're concerned, which is kind of crazy. It is kind of crazy. I remember waking up that morning, the whole, mm -hmm. where I was, everything. Yeah. Yeah. And those, yeah, I mean, that was, well, let's see. Yeah. A long time ago, 20 years. Yeah. So yeah. Sydney so wasn't this, even born yet. <laughs> yeah. So this will oh, take it and tell it as more of like a, like I said, a historical fiction story that makes it mm -hmm. less. It's kind of. Kinda it's kind of cool that they're doing all this and all the different events because then, you know, kids mm -hmm. like comic books. So yeah. Yeah. And that's, mm -hmm. you know, you get to learn a little history through comics and that's pretty great. Yeah. And it, it makes it accessible for everybody. Mm -hmm. uh, so before we get, you know, too down in the weeds about that, let's move yeah. on to what else you can pick up at your local comic shop this week. Like you pointed out, Natasha, not just comics, also toys. Toys. So we're going to look at your toy, new toys for this week video and you from the past can tell us what's out this week. <laughs> Natasha here to give you a look inside the previous toy chest. Let's find out what's at comic shops this week. Be sure to check with your local comic shop for availability. And to see more, head over to PreviousWorld.com slash Toy Chest. 
There you'll feast your eyes on more hot new collectibles. So thank you, Natasha, from the past, pointing out all of the <laughs> all of the cool collectibles you can get this week. Uh, and that's not even everything. Like that's uh -uh. just hitting the high points. If you go to previewsworld.com slash new releases, you can see a full list of everything that's out this week. And that's comics, graphic novels, toys, collectibles, games, apparel, you name it. I almost wore that necklace today. <laughs> what necklace? My my X-Men necklace. <laughs> oh, you should have. Yeah. I almost did. I went with my Thor hammer. You know. It's the same thing. Yeah. Matches your rogue pick. <laughs> okay. So we're going to move on to the news segment, which is very exciting. Um, we're going to talk about the Ringo Award nominees, which were just announced yeah. recently. Uh, so to give some background, maybe to some of you who are less familiar, uh, the Mike Ringo Comic Book Industry Awards, or known affectionately as the Ringo Awards, um, are an annual celebration of the creativity, skill, and fun of comics. Uh, nominations are determined by fans and pros alike, which is great, it's really inclusive, but voting on the final nominations uh, is open to the comic book creative community. Uh, so your professionals and all of that good stuff. And then winners are announced Saturday, October 23rd as part of Baltimore Comic Con, which is coming up shortly about a month and a half. Uh, so let's kind of like, I know you pointed this out, Natasha. So let's kind of like go through and pick out some of the things that maybe jumped out at us. What were some nominations that you were excited about? I did. I was ex um, excited because uh, this guy is awesome. Also writes one of my favorite mm -hmm. comics, um, it, Dirk Manning from Source Point okay. Press. And it's the Buried But Not Dead. It's um, mm -hmm. He's up for Best Graphic Novel. And um, he... He writes a, also another mm -hmm. comic called Hope, which is about a superhero yeah. who's also a mom. So that one, you know, mm -hmm. really hits my heartstrings. Right. <laughs> but um, the story is really great. The images are great. And I'm super excited mm -hmm. for him. He's a really good dude. So it's like really exciting to see people who really hustle and work really, really hard. He's an indie uh, writer. And mm -hmm. for him to get nominated is pretty, pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, that's and they, amazing. There's just so many. And, and the thing I like about the Ringo Awards is there's just so many uh, indies in there yeah. and um, great collections. And I mean, and it also gives you a chance, I think, like as a comic book fan, go through that mm -hmm. list, go through that list yeah. of nominations and mm -hmm. you're going to like, like, oh, the, well, gra here's a list of these graphic novels I should probably check out because they're yeah. clearly awesome, you know? And so it's, it's really cool. It's kind of like um, when it's, Oscar season or things like that, like all these right. movies that you never heard about pop up. And then suddenly you're like, oh, I should probably watch that. And you're like, oh my God, that movie is awesome. And yeah. you know, things like that. So like, this is kind of your list of, these are comics you should probably check out this year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the one that jumped out at me that I'm excited about is uh, for best anthology, that anthology about the women's suffrage and the 19th amendment. Mm. Yeah, that's really cool. I love, I love all that kind of stuff. Like comics yeah. are so cool. <laughs> You can do so much with it. And that's so like much. really yeah. trying to home here. It's not just superheroes. Like there's no. so many stories to tell. No, there's so many intense stories and uh, whether it's history or, you know, fiction, mm -hmm. nonfiction, whatever, like it's just comics are so cool because it, it just opens your world up. So like, mm -hmm. if you'd like to read stories or you like to just look at pictures, you got a combination mm -hmm. of the two a lot of times. And like, it's just, Comics are just really, really great, and they yeah. just span span generations, and still will generations to come. So, comics are awesome. That's why we're here. <laughs> Absolutely, and it, like you said, it's a great way to kind of like bridge the gap, right? Like it's for yeah. all ages, so it gives you something to maybe have in common with your parents or your kid or whatever, mm -hmm. and a chance to like as a parent. We mm -hmm. get to share these comics and stories that we love with our kids right. and being able to to share those memories with them and then being able to see them discover mm -hmm. their own stories yeah. that maybe they'll share one day with their kids. So like, Absolutely. that's really cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if you guys want to see the full list of Ringo nominees, you can head over to RingoAwards.com. Check out that list. Like Natasha said, you might find something new that you like. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're going to move on to the trailer. Yes. Sorry, did you have something to say? It looked like nope. I cut you off. Okay, nope. I'm sorry. <laughs> I got look excited. I'm kind of excited about 
Looking at my notes. <laughs> I'm pretty excited about the trailer this week. So this week's trailer is for the Star Runner Chronicles Fallen Star from Atlantis Studios. And it's a really cool sci-fi romance, like action adventure epic. So we'll show you the trailer and then we come back. I'll give you a little more background on what you're getting into here. Oh, what I wouldn't give to turn invisible. Moving around so much was starting to wear on me already. Yet here I am. Another school, foster home, and another place I can ruin everything. I just hoped I could blend in for once without anyone finding out. But today really proved how much of a freak I am. Something inside me broke open. Suddenly I was seeing the future, weird planets, and this woman. It was strange, but familiar. Now I'm a fugitive. Scientists, police, and what I assume to be some secret military organization are hunting me down. Now that I've dragged my friends into this, I wonder if they're all right. Maybe I am too dangerous. I'm not gonna let them win. I have no choice but to fight back before the truth about my origin is destroyed forever. Okay, so that was the Star Runner Chronicles Fallen Star from Atlantis Studios. Uh, it's a three issue limited edition series, follows this rebellious teenage girl, Aura, um, Aurora, sorry, uh, with a mysterious past and unpredictable power she can't control and doesn't understand. Aurora Palmer would do anything to not stand out, but her mysterious abilities make her different than everyone else. And when a sudden flare up of her long term, long hidden powers exposes her, she's forced to uncover the truth behind her origins before it's too late and her powers are destroyed forever. So this is really cool. This is a full edition print and it's got 20 pages of exclusive content in addition to the story. It also has tons of cool concept art, storyboards and uh, behind the scenes stuff. So it's perfect for collectors. And like I said, heading into the trailer, if you like science fiction, romance or action and adventure, this is totally for you. It's available for pre-order now and it's hitting comic shops on November 10th, which is just around the corner. I'm totally sucked in. That trailer was awesome. I wanted it to keep going. Right? I love <laughs> I a good know, trailer. <laughs> I wanted to know what was going to happen next, which I know is the whole point of a trailer. Right. But yeah, that de that definitely looks interesting. And that's right up my my alley. Oh, I like yeah. action adventure and sci-fi. Mm -hmm. And I'm definitely a sucker for like the shadowy government agency trope. So anything <laughs> that's not that, I'm immediately yeah. towards these people. <laughs> All right, so we're going to move on to yeah. Social Swamp, which is my favorite part of the show. Uh, so <laughs> Natasha's going to take it away and tell us what you guys had to say about a very interesting question this week. <laughs> boop, 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 boop. Um, so this week we reached out <laughs> to the interwebs to get your answers uh, to this wonderful question. If you gained superpowers, would you be a hero? or a villain? And would you utilize your powers based on your, and how would you use your powers based on your choice? You let us know in the comments below. And then here is some of what we saw. So Casey James said, I would act on the behalf of the defenseless, the voiceless, and the downtrodden. So as to protect the world from the deeds of the cruel, wicked, corrupt, and evil. I'm sure that's, isn't that Batman's line? Ultimately, the <laughs> perception of my actions will determine if I'm a hero or a villain in the eyes of the public at large. Pretty sure that's from a Batman comic. Right. <laughs> but I appreciate it. Uh, Brandon said, I would try to be a hero, but I'm not going to lie. Money pays the bills. So, you know, the first one's free. <laughs> well. Oh, my God. Respect. <laughs> yeah. Connor. Mm -hmm. um, Connor says, really depends on what powers I end up getting. Atomic mm -hmm. manipulation. I'll be the savior of the world. Invisibility, super speed, the pettiest criminal. <laughs> All right, at least he's honest. Uh, like, yeah, I right. <laughs> yeah, I like I like that he just throws out like what, you know, the chances are of uh, the little uh, skills you're gonna get. Um, Julie says I would be a villain with good intent. I mm -hmm. chose telepathy. I would have so many politicians admitting all their sins and turning themselves into law enforcement. I would have most of the filthy rich donating all of their offshore accounts to the needy. So while mm -hmm. I would be helping the poor and making sure the corrupt. Um, are properly punished 
overriding the free will of anyone is decidedly villainous. Okay. That's very self-aware. <laughs> yes, very self-aware. <laughs> and I would imagine that would be a little tricky because if you're taking down all these really powerful people, there are certainly, I mean, we've seen this in comic books. You try to take down those super powerful people. Mm -hmm. They're going to try to find a way to take you out. So you yeah. stop doing that. So uh, let's see. Dove said, it would be cool to be a hero with superhuman communication skills. No mm -hmm. telepathy involved. The ability to never misunderstand anything you hear, pick up on hidden information, and to assertively and effectively communicate everything that you mean to say. Also being able to quickly pick up and communicate fluently in any language or dialect that you hear, the power <laughs> would have great utility in diplomacy, intelligence gathering, public relations, team <laughs> directing, and strategizing, and I'm pretty sure this person used it on the resume on Indy. My goodness. <laughs> it sounds like a good mission statement. It does. <laughs> <laughs> Notes, keeping it. Oh, a bit of both. Um, as Loki, Prince of Asgard, Odinson, the rightful king of Jotunheim, and god of mischief once said, a bit of both. <laughs> oh, I really love that. I love awesome. that. <laughs> <laughs> all, ding, ding. That sounds good. <laughs> it turns out the necklace was the perfect choice. <laughs> right? Hooray. <laughs> Who all right. Knew? So what do you think in here, Natasha? Oh, gosh. On the spot. Um, well, <laughs> being a mother mm. of three, I'm going to try my best to be a hero. Uh, just to, you know, have a good example for my sure. children. But honestly, if anybody messed with my children, mm, okay, oh, it would probably get really ugly and they'd be like, uh, yeah, no, she's kind of a villain. Yeah. So I don't know. I know. I guess a, a, a little Loki, a, a bit of both. A bit of both. Best yeah. of intentions. Yeah. I'd want to, I'd want to help out and that kind of thing. But I also would protect the heck out of my family. So, yeah. Um, you know, I, I don't know that I would have the rule of superman or batman and not kill someone if they got bad with my children but and i said that on air awesome. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> nine, don't, nine, clip, nine. don't clip this out of context <laughs> no, she it's said she'd kill somebody that's no. an interesting point though right because that's the whole thing about like having just an extreme moral code that you don't yeah. know overboard yeah 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 i feel but like i don't I think i would because like i certainly like I make a point like with my kids not to say the word hate and, you know, right. things like that. And I, w I would hope that if I had some kind of a power, I would continue that good heartedness mm -hmm. with the powers. But I guess right. it also depends on what power. Yeah, that's that's yeah. another thing. I have a lot of like a lot of follow up yeah. questions. Like, do you get to pick yeah. the power or are you just giving yeah. power? Yeah, I mean, I would assume in classic superhero fashion. It would happen by accident. True. Yeah, I guess no <laughs> one don't ever really know. Yeah, their power unless you're, you know, yeah. Batman or Iron Man. I feel like so. Okay, so I've been thinking about this a lot, right? Mm -hmm. And I feel like also a bit of a Loki answer here. I would have <laughs> best intentions, right? I feel like I would want to use my powers for good, right? But then I feel like I, I just I have a terrible feeling that I would go overboard with it and just become like an anti-hero right like i would I just become that like i would want to do the right things but then it would uh -huh. be like well and now, now i'm like personally like i feel i have a personal vendetta against this person so now i have to like it <laughs> make them suffer like i feel like i would just take it too far yeah i could i could kind of see that you're a very honest person <laughs> and like that really raw honesty you know and so like yeah. sometimes people might be like, whoa, calm down. That's a little too much. And you're like, yeah, but this guy. You know, right, yes. <laughs> but this guy was aggressive X, Y, and Z. And this now this is going to happen, you know? Right, and then it just it yeah. gets out of hand and like escalates yeah. from there. And then it's a real yeah. issue. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I'm having to come over and help. And, yeah. Right, yeah. and now we're creating yeah. a small team of yeah. superpower people. Like we're having a small superhero team. Darn it. Yeah. Sorry. Since Troy's not here, let's ask Johnny. What would you do? Johnny well, Rose. Why, well, hey everyone, Johnny Rose here, producer of this uh, rabble. Um, <laughs> oh yikes! Um, it's it's a good question. I think ultimately, would I? I don't know about what the superpower would be, mm -hmm. but I think going off of what some of the uh, responses were, I would like to be a villain 
turned hero. Oh, Ooh, because redemption story. A redemption story, exactly. Because I feel <laughs> like they have some of the more compelling story arcs in my mind. Mm -hmm. It's much more uplifting to to see come, someone come from back from the dark side. Like think of what happened oh, to Ky Ky Kylo Ren. Mm. Yeah. I mean, yeah. that kind of story to me is much more inspiring and uplifting <laughs> than like say what happened to Cyclops, you know, how he kind of basically yeah. turned to the to the dark side to bring yeah. back the, the Star Wars reference. So um, ultimately I think maybe the superpower is some kind of telepathy or mind control. I mean, I can see myself can kind see of that. using it to control people, but then kind of through like the course of events realize like the error of my ways and then kind of use it as a betterment for mankind in a similar fashion to Professor, mm -hmm. Professor Xavier. Mm -hmm. Very That's cool. like a well thought out that answer. Is a, that is real well thought. And when you think about it too, I mean, those stories are better because it's so much harder to go from the bad to the good than it yeah. is from the good to the bad. Yeah, that's right? a that's, that's a, a slippery lot. slope. Yeah, that's that's really cool. Good good job, Johnny. That's Yay. a good answer. I get <laughs> a cool star you, for you the day. Will you <laughs> join our superhero team? Yeah, will you join us? No, I'm too busy. No. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm too busy solving the world's problems in my own head, my own new storyline. Rude. <laughs> I'm just it's gonna be great. Time. I'm gonna go overboard, take something too far, and Natasha's gonna reel me back in, and we're gonna save the world. I'm gonna mom everybody. Yeah. <laughs> yeah pretty much. Just that I've way. got cookies. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Don't make me put you on timeout. <laughs> okay. Oh boy. I'm that gonna is go, superpower uh, right we're there. Fighting, fighting, fighting bad guys. I said get over here. Five, four, three. <laughs> the countdown. Ask again. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I count I, I do that with my son. I count down, by the way. Yeah. And I have to real quick, this is kind of like uh back to what you were saying earlier about like comic books and sharing them with your kids and whatnot, mm -hmm. and passing down the traditions and generations. Two days ago we had Cartoon Network on and they're showing these commercials that are saying, oh, it's going to be a family fun Star Wars weekend. We're running, you know, episodes one through six and the Rogue One and all this. Ooh, and, I was, and I look over at my son, Carter, who's five years old, by the way. And I said, hey, Carter, you don't watch Star Wars with daddy? Daddy used to like watch these growing up. And he looks at me. He's like, I don't like Star Wars. I was like, oh, <laughs> I think like, all of us just died a little bit. Oh <laughs> my god! And I said to him, "Carter, you just broke your father's heart. <laughs> How could you? No, oh, no. no. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that would have been a better response if I yeah. thought about it. Yes. No. It's like you will turn to the dark side, little one. <laughs> oh my goodness! So, I'm so anyway. sorry. Oh. So How old is time. Carter? He's, he's five. Five, you gotta, five. you gotta wait. Try again in like three years. Yeah, it'll, it'll be, it'll give him time. Well, see, I was born in '77. I know Return of the Jedi came out in '83, so that mm -hmm. I remember seeing that in theaters. So right around like six years old, mm -hmm. that was kind of the sweet part, sweet spot mm -hmm. when it kind of took me over. So I'm hoping in another year yeah. or so I might be able to, to, uh, to, to have him want to watch it. So. Mm -hmm. We'll see. That's yeah, nothing to do with me. Don't tell him what it is and just sit him in front of the TV oh, and be true. like, "Hey, we're gonna watch this movie." Yeah. And see what happens. Too. And not to like typecast here, he is a boy, and there are swords and guns, basically. Laser blast, pew pew. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've got my like my master replica lightsaber, like that we play with in our, in the basement, like all the all the time. So they're gonna be like, "This is where it comes from." You're gonna learn your history right now. Right. right. Yeah. <laughs> Show some respect. Anyway, <laughs> carry on, ladies. Oh my God, I, I, all three of us Gosh. had the same reaction. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that feels like blasphemy. Right. How could you? Right. Actually, oh, I'm going to come back real quick because oh, I, okay. I do want to, I do want to, this just popped into my head, my mind. I would kind of want to bring it back around to the hero and villain um, conversation that we were just having mm -hmm. uh, and say, to kind of close it out, that the story of how Anakin falls from hero to villain to become Darth Vader, mm -hmm. as opposed to when Darth Vader kind of like redeems himself at the end of Jedi, that seems to be oh, that's spoilers. Oh, okay. Sorry, that's, <laughs> sorry too too soon. Yeah, too soon. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> that just to bring it back to that hero villain conversation, yeah. that that is a good analogy. That kind of makes more of a of a more interesting story for me. Mm -hmm. So. Carry on. <laughs> Gold think, star, Johnny. <laughs> there's a debate somewhere in there about Darth Vader's redemption. I don't know if we yeah. talked about that on the show, but my I brother so and I got into like a big conversation one time about like, 
Dar in terms of Darth Vader's redemption, like, is he redeemed holistically or is he just redeemed in Luke's eyes? And is there any yeah, coming oh. back from like galactic genocide? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's that little detail, right? <laughs> that little detail. Yeah, that little pesky, you know, pesky killing, genocide. Killing, <laughs> you know, cutting small children in half. You know, stuff like that. Right, blowing up entire. Total, you know, <laughs> little little details, little details like that. Yeah, right, really, they get yeah. you right. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's move on to the poll, which is also inflammatory in a different and equally <laughs> hilarious way. Uh, I asked everybody this week. Who would win in a foot race between the Flash and the Road Runner? <laughs> Welcome to Previous World Weekly. We re talk <laughs> tackle the hard hitting topics. Right. <laughs> really? I, 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 I totally lobbed it up. I was like, I know this is a dumb question. I was like, I know this is not like, no one wants to waste their time I on just, this. Thing. I just had a visual. <laughs> <laughs> Like I asked this question and then immediately everybody was like angry about it and they're like, well, what's Flash? Cartoon physics. Like just yeah. really right unpacking yeah. it. Oh my goodness. Uh, a blind beholder is saying, which Flash? Wally, Barry, yeah. and Jay would all win. Uh, Scottish Fog saying, Roadrunner is going to stop for that bird seed. Hey, okay, hold on. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> What was well, the actual results? I, 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 well, that's the thing, though. It's like we gotta like figure out what, what, which way to vote here. And I'm sorry, I keep reminding. I got like something. Uh, this is amazing, like uh, viewing. Um, <laughs> like, there's so many Do things. To, there's so many things to consider here because, like, the Roadrunner has never once been tripped up by any Acme gadget ever. That's true. You know, yeah. so his nimbleness. Has got giving him an edge, but how many times has the Flash been bested by some others like rival speedster? I mean, yeah, they, the they, Flash they, could also go into the Speed Force and go through time because he runs so fast. Well, how do you know that the Roadrunner hasn't done that off screen? Oh, well, that's true. So maybe you know the fake cave thing or the fake tunnel. I mean, those little Roadrunner those little, goes through it. Those little dust trails that are being left behind him. Maybe that's his own like little Warner Brothers like uh, Speed mm -hmm. Force. <laughs> <laughs> Who am I to say? Um, Natasha, which way are you, are you uh, swinging on I'm, this one? I'm going with the Flash. Flash? How about you, Ashton? Yeah. I'm going with Roadrunner because I think it's hilarious. <laughs> okay, so I'm I'm the tiebreaker. I, I, I would love to just put the Roadrunner in there, so I'm going <laughs> to... Oh, 46%. Ooh. The Flash is winning with 54%. Okay, that's close <laughs> to what I was expecting it to be. I definitely thought that the Flash was going to... Run away with that. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> wah, wah. I had to. I have no self control. <laughs> oh, man. So let's, let's, let's close this out before there's any other terrible dad <laughs> jokes in the show. Uh, all right. I mean, I guess Johnny's kicking us out of here. So let's wrap <laughs> this up. Natasha, what's the comic shop shout out? Our comic shop shout out is from Jonathan, and he wants to say hello to Gosh. London. It's his totally favorite comic shop there in London. Lovely staff and great selection. So go check out if you're in Lond London. You sound like you're from London. Um, go see Gosh. Or should we Gosh? I don't know. Oh that man. Terrible. This Johnny's right. We we, we yeah. wrap this up. Soon. <laughs> and we're done. We're done. <laughs> the lights uh, are blinking or getting cut out. <laughs> right. If you want to shout out your local comic shop on the show, on a, a different iteration of the show, find us online, tag your local comic shop. If they don't have a handle, just leave their name and use the hashtag support your LCS. We'll find your shop, shout them out on the show and give them some love. Uh okay. So and if yeah, you let's... don't know where to find your comic shop, go to comicshoplocator.com. Type in your little zip code there, and they will help you find your local comic shop. It's true. We make it easy for you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, seriously, so let's wrap this mess up before Johnny comes back and yells at us. <laughs> yeah. All right, so. We are never doing this again. Right. I, I, yeah, yeah. The same thing happened with Mia. Like, Troy leaves, and his show just becomes a disaster. <laughs> wow. <laughs> uh, all right, so we're going to bring this back in the barn really quick yeah. to hit the high points. Um. If you want to like, follow, subscribe, you can find us on social media. Troy, who is not here, he is on Previews World across everything, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. I am Free Comic Book Day if you want to come hang out and yell at us. Natasha, where can people find you on social media if they want to hang out with you? 
Canon like the weapon doll like Barbie and X like X Men Canon doll X on all platforms TikTok Twitter Instagram mm -hmm. space I don't know Mars uh, the inter the interwebs CanonX.com all all of the things that's me nice uh yeah. and we also have a cool article up for you guys this week called start here if you're new to comics or just looking to try your hand at something new uh these are five new comics that are either new number ones or just good jumping one points uh if you're new to that title so you can check that and we try to give you a, like an inclusive range of everything kind of across the board uh of all the different things so you know the big guys the indie guys all that good stuff so you can head over to previewsworld.com this is right on our homepage. again it's called start here five new titles to try your hand at you might find something that you love that you didn't know about Yay. all right so i guess that does it for us this week <laughs> you're welcome <laughs> right thank you for spending time with us yes. while we ramble for 45 minutes <laughs> All right, so that does it, does it for us here at Previews World Weekly. Uh, I don't know what Troy says, something about see you next time at the spinner rack. I'll botch it, so I guess. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you at the spinner rack. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> see you next time, guys. <laughs>